Is inflammation the silent killer of the modern era? Welcome back to Dental Talk. Today we are joined by Dr. Michael Glogauer, Head of Dental Oncology at Princess Margaret Hospital and Chief of Dentistry for University Health Network. Thanks for having me, Gary. It's great to have you here. Michael has just created a breakthrough technology that shows how this hidden threat connects to your total health in just 30 seconds. The oral systemic health revolution. It's here, it's real, and I know that it is a big topic of conversation with respect to total health and how we can maintain our oral health. And I'm, I'm a big advocate of oral health and the relation to systemic health. And just like we have to train and maintain our bodies, we have to train and maintain our mouths as well for, for proper health. Maybe you can talk about that and elaborate on that. Sure. So I think, you know, the most common inflammatory disease, infectious disease, is periodontal disease. And we also know that inflammation is one of the critical mediators and initiators associated with most chronic diseases and is also associated for many diseases that are well known to us that are leading killers, such as cardiovascular disease, such as cancer. So again, inflammation is this key meteor, this key sort of hyper-inflammatory process that is at the root of many of the ailments that affect man. And the most common happens to be in the mouth, and that's periodontal disease. And so, you know, as a periodontist and a clinician scientist, I'm passionate about trying to understand how this inflammation in the mouth actually impacts systemic health. Um, and with, you know, we've discussed there are many, many diseases that have shown to have an association with periodontal disease. In other words, they, they're co-travelers. When you look at studies that patients with cardiovascular disease, a disproportionate number, for example, will have periodontal disease. But does that mean that periodontal disease is actually the cause or that the underlying etiology, the cause for both of those diseases is the same? And, you know, we haven't really been able to say more than that. And as I was sort of mentioning to you earlier, we have some really, really exciting definitive work coming out of our lab that definitively shows that there is a cardiotoxic microbiome or a set of bacteria within the periodontium. Some of them are well-known players, such as P. gingivalis, but there's some other species that work together to generate immune cells that actually attack the heart. And we've shown that in patients who are going through heart transplants, that when they have this, this perfect mesh of some genetic components, but of this very bad set of bacteria in their mouth, that, and periodontal disease, that they're able to generate these T cells that attack the, their new hearts. When we went and we looked at patients with periodontal disease, we've also shown that in this uh, population, uh, that if they have this spectrum of um, bad bacteria in the mouth, they generate these bad immune cells that we can actually start to detect markers of heart damage in patients who are otherwise healthy. So we're obviously working on publishing this in a high impact journal. And within a year, we really think this data could completely revolutionize how we look at periodontal disease and its impact on systemic health and cardiovascular disease in particular. And how many more times likely is someone with periodontal disease to have cardiovascular disease or have the risk of cardiovascular disease? So, you know, I, I think, you know, your listeners, and we've all heard this whole concept of personalized medicine, but it's also personalized dentistry. In other words, there is a spectrum of um, genetic components the oral micro, the, the microbiome in particular, both in the gut and the mouth. And then when these things come together in a given sort of set of circumstances, a given person, it will be at risk of having more severe periodontal disease, but also in a systemic disease as well. And I think, you know, the future of dentistry, and this is where I think Paramonitor comes into it, is that we, we need to be able to evaluate our patients in, uh, uh, along specific biomarkers, um, and the biomarker that I've been particularly working on for about 20 plus years is white blood cells in the mouth called neutrophils. And these cells are really the first responders against any infection or damage within the mouth. And we, I've sort of made a uh, sort of a career of monitoring the level of these cells uh, with a view towards maybe seeing if they have, uh, if they're a very excellent biomarker for early periodontal breakdown, and also whether they're a, a biomarker of more systemic impacts of periodontal disease. So with respect to cardiovascular disease, how can cardiologists and GP medical doctors incorporate oral health into their assessments and also right. into their treatment if need be? Well, this is where Paramonitor comes in. You know, the first 
thought was to have it have dentists and hygienists use it in the initial point of contact with their patient when they come in for their hygiene or their new patient exam, do the test and say, like, does my pa patient have either subclinical or severe periodontal infection based on their white blood cell counts, similar to when you go to a physician and they do a complete blood cell count, they take blood. This is uh, completely analogous to what Paramonitor is set up to do. So this would be an initial screen, but the non-invasive and the ease of use of this 30-second mouth rinse is completely uh, applicable to physicians and your, your GP. In other words, it's a simple way of them determining whether you've actually got periodontal disease or all inflammation in your mouth, vis-a-vis -vis then maybe saying, you know, have you gone to your dentist? So it's a very easy way for them to do a periodontal screening without having to go into the, if we say using a periodontal probe, which they're certainly not going to do. Other than cardiovascular disease, we also know through uh, a study in uh, sciences advances that P. gingivalis is implicated in patients who have Alzheimer's as well. Could you elaborate on that? Sure. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, not to get into the whole Alzheimer's story, but, you know, science is really, and the way it was funded in the United States on Alzheimer's has really let us down because they focused on these plaques and put money into uh, something that really was a dead end. And it turns out that there's an inflammatory component and there's actually a microbiome component with P. gingivalis being identified as perhaps one of the key players in the development of Alzheimer's. But let me give you another example, because Alzheimer's is obviously, so that's a whole, uh, another sort of pathway to go down. But, you know, there was some excellent work that recently came out at the Fred Hutchins Center, which in Seattle, which is a big cancer research center. And they showed that uh, Fusobacterium nucleatum, which is another periodontal pathogen, was actually associated with metastases and, 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 and colon cancer. So, um, there's some really bad actors in the mouth. And uh, I think, you know, in the next five to six to 10 years, we're going to be even more impressed and there's going to be even more uh, evidence just, su just suggesting how important the oral microbiome is in overall health. And I think, you know, just to put the microbiome into, into context, um, you know, mammals are um, tubes. We have an opening in each end. We as dentists work at the front end of that. But essentially, it's, it's gums to bums. And lining the inside of that tooth, there are essentially five to six bacterial cells for every cell in the entire body. And the significance of this is if you think about it, on a cellular basis, there's five to six of you lining the inside of that. And that has a tremendous impact on the immune system and has a tremendous impact on health. And, uh, you know, I think that that is going to be realized as we move forward in, 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 into the future. So we talked about cardiovascular disease. We talked about Alzheimer's. What about cancer patients? You're head of oncology at Princess Margaret Hospital. And true fact that about 57% of cancer patients have periodontal disease, whereas 28% of those don't have periodontal disease. So as head of oncology, how do you see oral health connecting to cancer prevention and, of course, treatment? Great question. Well, I think there are a number of, of reasons for that. And one of the things is inflammation. As I mentioned, inflammation is an etiologic agent uh, that impacts on the health of cells. Uh, and if you have tissues or a, a genetic, genetic predisposition to cancer, you're, any inflammation may push you over the edge. And I think that, uh, you know, the, again, we as dentists, uh, those of us in the dental profession, have uh, an important role in preventing uh, not only, the, as you said, the, as we talked about, the systemic impact of inflammation in the mouth, but also in the prevention of diseases within the mouth, including periodontal disease, dental caries, but also oral cancer. And one of the most disturbing things that I see on a routine basis is that many cancers are detected late in the mouth. And it's, it's, it's a tragedy for us to see these patients because it really impacts if they survive the quality of their life due to the amount of, uh, of tissues that get lost, but also many of them have much shortened lives because their cancer was not caught early enough. And I, you know, uh, part of my mission for the next 10 to 15 years will hopefully be to try to help uh, us do a better job in early detection of cancer. And Paramonitor in and of itself, yes, 90 plus percent of the inflammation that it's detecting is from the periodontium. But it's also, uh, you know, getting a positive test. If you see your patient has no periodontal disease in them, oftentimes it can be from a squamous cell carcinoma or cancer that is in the early stages. Well, congratulations on being the pioneer of Perio Monitor. And um, you just received Health Canada approval, I, I just heard. So congratulations right. on you. that as well. Can you just walk us through how Perio Monitor works and how this 30-second rinse 
actually detects inflammation and sure. what information we gather from that. Right. So, uh, you know, we, we're all familiar. You've got this tooth that is coming out of the bone and there's this periodontal attachment to the sulcus that attaches to the tooth. And that is actually the weak point in the, uh, in the body for where bacteria are trying to get into the body due to that break in the epithelium that uh, protects us. So what we found is, is that uh, there's microbiome that builds up in that crevice. We know that. Our, uh, you know, our hygienist colleagues are spending their time making sure they eliminate that biofilm. Um, but while they're coming from the top side down into the crevice, the immune system is funneling these white blood cells up through the base to keep that biofilm back. And there's this constant basal flow of these white blood cells into the mouth. Now, if you have inflammation, you have surface area, or you have a breakdown in that attachment, now all of a sudden the body has to put more of these cells. And so, you know, what, we've, what I've studied over the 30, 20 years was to develop this well-quantified 30-second mouth rinse with very careful details that basically collects those neutrophils and essentially counts them. The test counts them. And we know what the average health-associated levels are. There's a threshold. And if you're below that uh, threshold, you'll get um, the test will reveal that you're below the threshold. And if you're above it, it will tell you if you're above it and by how much. So it'll actually give you a, 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 you'll actually get a score over and above. So there's actually four colors. The first two are associated with health and the, the third and fourth are associated with disease. And that test can be done in 30 seconds very quickly within the office. It's a screening test, as I said. And the beauty of it is that, as you know, I was telling you about those patients with cardiotoxic disease. Actually, it turns out, all of those patients who have cardiotoxic levels of disease that impact our, all of those patients score at the four level in our research studies. So, you know, I'm quite confident that this is an excellent test. I would say that there are two really other important elements associated with this test. And that's number one, when you're, you've got a team of hygienists working within your clinics, probing depths, how are you actually checking for disease? There are different you have to be able to develop a system that so that everybody is detecting inflammation and disease in the same way. And while bleeding on probing is the sort of gold standard, again, pressure, how much pressure, angles, how people are probing is, is very hard to keep universal. But with a test like this, you can be rest assured that everybody is using the same way of detecting inflammation within the mouth. That's number one. And number so it's two, standardized. It's completely standardized. And that's a huge value uh, to get everybody on the same page. And then I would say number two, the biggest element is patient education. The, we, lots of studies, including we've shown that when patients can participate in their diagnosis, inf inflammation is an abstract, oral inflammation is an abstract concept to most patients. But if you can actually turn that into a color change on a strip and you can show the patient, what we found is when patients come back for the next appointment, they want you to do that test, right? So we've all got Apple watches, and we've all got ways of measuring various components of our health, the mouth is no different. Here you have patients where they're able to actually see the color change, and that can motivate them not only to follow through with treatment, but also motivate them to be more vigilant at home. So we can detect progression of disease if they're not taking care of their mouth. Absolutely. And you can see resolution of disease as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah. Which will motivate the patients even more. Yeah, you know, as a periodontist, when we, we have a patient who comes in who's got severe infections, got periodontal disease, when we carry out our absolute best therapy, we can't probe again or check for three to six months, depending on who your periodontist is. This is a way with, with this test and an oral rinse, you can have them come back within two weeks and actually determine, show whether you actually have been successful in treating the underlying disease. That's great. So dentists can see how good they are at, at exactly. treating the disease as well. Exactly. So very exciting, Health Canada approval. How easily, how readily available is it? And what's your, what's your rollout strategy for Perio Monitor? Right. So, uh, so Oral Science is the company who, who I've been who, taking this across the finish line with. They're an excellent company in sort of the periodontal field and uh, dental field. Uh, they, um, th they've just received the shipment from our manufacturer. Um, and the first orders will be going out at the end of July, early August. And uh, I'm hoping that... Uh, you know, my colleagues in Canada will buy into this and see what an amazing tool this is to help them optimize the health of their so patients. That's exciting. What, what patient implications are you most excited about? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, as a periodontist, uh, you know, treating periodontal disease, uh, it's, it is difficult to get some patients on board so that they understand uh, the disease process, the inflammation. 
Um, and I'm for, for me, it's a, it's an educational tool, and really for me to get a sense of is treatment working early on instead of having to wait three to six months to see how how we're doing. So I'm really excited about those two components. So that'll really increase those conversations now between patient and practitioner right. and hygienist, and we're we're first line of defense in my opinion, right? Because you know patients will see their dentist more often than they see their medical doctor, right. and right. to have this type of test and that's available right. is, but, you is know, and, groundbreaking. And I think, you know, one of the stark, you know, we started off talking about that cardiac story. And, you know, when I was talking to my colleagues, when I showed the data to the cardiac, the cardiac surgeons who, who were doing these heart transplants, and when I showed it to them, you know, s- s- the some of them said, well, our protocol is to, in some of these cases, not let the patient see a dentist for a year post heart transplant. And that may be the opposite. If this data, you know, once this gets out, that may be the opposite of how we should be monitoring. In other words, optimizing oral health going into these heart trends for a subset of patients may be extremely critical to their success. So sort of taking a transition here now, we have a lot of AI technology now, which is is great because it sort of gives us a second opinion. So dentists can go back, hygienists can go back, and they can look at what they've diagnosed themselves. How does Perio Monitor work alongside practitioners and other new tools to right. improve the diagnostics? Great question. So I think, you know, AI is, is most certainly the future. But I think one of the things we have to remember about AI, AI needs data. AI needs information. AI needs biomarkers. And so Monitor is that first biomarker or that first test that you will eventually feed into algorithms that where the AI will help you determine what treatment should be given, how you should approach those patients. So uh, while AI is absolutely the future, that doesn't, it does not sort of prevent the need for excellent diagnostic biomarkers and tools that it will use to help optimize health outcomes. So patients can visualize inflammation in their mouth and with these advanced diagnostic tools, improve their commitment to their oral health. And we've already discussed that. Let's talk about cost. How much does it cost for a dentist to actually give that test, the period monitor test? So the, the test is essentially, you know, somewhere about $10 plus or minus, depending on how many tests you buy. So, you know, it's, I, I will say, you know, the Health Canada was a huge hurdle to get over. There are really no tests, getting a test approved for periodontal disease and oral inflammation detection has been extremely difficult. In fact, there are no tests on the market that have either received FDA or Oral Health Canada approval. So it was quite an investment in time and effort. We had to run uh, multiple clinical trials, both south of the border and north of the border. Um, and so it, it was a huge step to get over. I think that um, the the ability to uh, of this test to really sort of uh, take things to the next level in this world of AI is going to be important. And I, I want to just add one thing, and is that, yes, it measures gross levels of inflammation, but one of the amazing things, it detects subclinical inflammation as it's starting to ramp up. And so one of the things we found in our trials is that you can start to detect inflammation before there's bleeding on probing. And that's one of the, uh, that's, that's another thing I'm really excited about is that it allows us to monitor patients and detect early signs of breakdown before it actually starts to occur. Before they actually see it clinically. It's Correct. amazing. So dental professionals will truly be partners in total health with Absolutely. our patients. And for $10, you know, a, a test, man, that's amazing right. with the benefits that, that patients are getting. Right. And us as dentists, because now we're we're basically stopping disease in its tracks before right. it happens. Well, you know, uh, you know, having a clinical practice of myself and having three hygienists working one of the biggest challenges of introducing new technology is they're already so compressed for time. They're like, we don't have time to do X, Y, and Z. But in, in this case, when the patients are coming in and they're, you're having them pre-rinse to do, to take two or three minutes, you could be talking to them, updating their medical history while they're doing the rinsing. It can be incorporated into a regular hygiene program without putting undue burden on the hygienist. And in fact, it, it helps them as a segue into oral hygiene and inflammation, et cetera. That's fantastic. Well, this has been an unbelievable conversation. And once again, congratulations on pioneering this. Thanks very much. This innovation, Perio Monitor. Join us next time on Dental Talk as we continue exploring innovations that improve total health outcomes. Until next time.